All right, folks, welcome back. Last week of the regular season, Arizona, Arizona State this week for the Territorial Cup. We'll go ahead and open up some questions for Coach Someone. What made you and the rest of the defensive coaching staff believe that rushing three would be effective? What's that? Uh, why did we didn't rush three the whole game. We, we changed up and, and we blitzed okay. and we rushed three some of the time because based on what had happened the whole year, nobody's really gotten to him. So to be able to change things up was a, uh, what we thought was the best plan to play against Washington State. What does the Territorial Cup mean to you? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I've said this before. I think somebody asked the radio show last night. Um, you know, and, until you, you're, you're as a coach, you're, you know, I think guys are kidding themselves or lying. When they, until you're involved in it, you know, you really don't get a feel for it. And I've been in, um, I listed them last night. It was kind of scary. I think I've, I've been in the Apple Cup. I've been in the Brass Boot, at uh, which is Wyoming and Colorado State. Um, Paul Bunyan Axe in Minnesota and in, in, in uh, Wisconsin. The uh, old oaken bucket at uh, Indiana and Purdue, uh, the Red River shootout, um, you know, and then I was an assistant coach when, um, before and then moved to the SEC to, to uh, you know, it was it was Texas and A and M, you know, really Thanksgiving night or, or Friday night. So, you know, I've been involved in a, in a bunch of them. Um, and until you're involved in those, you're really involved. A little bit different about the old Oak and Bucket because I played there. Uh, and uh, so I knew a little bit more about that. But then when you're involved, I said last night, you know, you're pulling up to these games. And during the game, you know, sometimes the intensity level in the parking lot is, is, <laughs> is worse than on the field between, between alums and fans. And, and you can feel that, you know, as you get closer to the game. So. I'm looking forward to it. I think um, you know the fact that um, the, the cup is not here um, gives gives us a, a, a you know as as we start talking about things you know and and I talk to people here in town and, and alums and and you know how important it is you know to to uh, um, bring the cup back. You you get a, a real good sense of the intensity level that's coming this weekend. Games you listed, which one is your favorite? And also, with you know, when you talk about rivalry, you don't want to overload the kids with too much. But what elements do you think from your coaching experience are important for kids to, to be associated with and know about rivalry? Well, it, it means the game's important, you know, and and uh, they're all important. But rivalry games are, are a little bit different. Um, you know, I've like I said, I've been involved in um, and some games that, that some people didn't think were very important that the, the intensity level was, you know, in, in Laramie, Wyoming, for the brass boot is pretty pretty intense. In Colorado State, too, you get there. So, you know, things are what, what's important. And, um, you know, that, that trophy being brought back to uh, your school or your locker room at, at the end of the game, uh, you know, means something. And it means something to... Uh, many of these, obviously, are either in-state or right across state lines. And so a lot of people who either uh, had choices and, and, and went to school at, at, at these institutions or uh, work with uh, people that, that uh, go to the other institution, and, and uh, there's, you know, that's a whole year. You have to listen to some things that maybe you don't want to listen to. And, uh, um, and that, that's, that's part of it. But... You know, I, I think to um, ignore that, say, well, this is just another game. It's it. I, I you, know, you used to say that, but even as a player, you know, you, you knew what that was about. And, and uh, um, so, yeah, we're going to approach it the same. But you know, deep down inside, everybody knows it's 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 a uh, it's a rivalry game. It's it's for the trophy. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a strange question, but so you talk, mentioned the trophy games. Maybe Old Oak and Bucket aside, what's your in all of college football? What's your favorite trophy, the rivalry game trophy? I don't know. I mean, we've like I said, I've played for, I've seen a bunch of things, you know. So, um, you know, you, you, I grew up in a, in a time where, you know, this weekend, you know, it was, it, it, you would get, um, you know, born in Alabama, you, you'd see the the Alabama Auburn game. And then be late in the afternoon, 
Um, early in the afternoon, it was what Michigan, Ohio State, and then in a time where there was an Oklahoma Nebraska game. How about that? Uh, you guys forget about that. So, um, who would have thought that would never happen? But that was part of the deal. And, and then the weekend was all about uh, Arizona, Arizona State, uh, USC later on that night, and in USC, UCLA. So, you know, that was, that's that was how you know. I grew up in my house and and uh, um, and watching those games and, and watching rivalry games where you saw all kinds of different things happen and you know before there was a time of, of uh, conference uh, championship playoffs um, before a time of you know the BCS and and then um, all those things those games usually came down to meaning something at the end about uh, just about a lot of different things rankings championships. Things like that. I'm sure you bring in ex-players to talk all the time, but, but will you do that this week? Do you think it's important to have guys come in and tell stories this particular week? Yes. I will do that. Um, a lot of the penalties in the first half against Washington State were kind of a personal foul and sportsmanlike conduct nature. Given the intensity level that you talked about for this upcoming game, how do you avoid a repeat of those? We're going to handle that this week. Uh, we've been handling it, you know, we, we've been up and down and very inconsistent with that, Mike, this year. And, um, you know, with some of the guys that have, were involved in those, um, you know, so the, the two face mask penalties, it, it, you got a guy who's really trying to get off a block and make a play, you know. Um, but the back-to-back, -back, you know, the first one was kind of iffy. The second one, you know, that was a face mask penalty. The guys are getting there. Uh, you know, you get – a kicker, a punter who's trying to make a play to run down a punt return, right? Where we should have got him on the ground at the 15 yard line. He's doing the best he can. And, um, you know, that, that, you can see what you want on that, on that per first one. But, yeah. uh, but the early, the early personal foul is inexcusable. Um, didn't show what happened. What, is, what happened with Scott? Uh, there's a seam down the field and, and away from the play, and um, it, it was, one of the receivers was trying to cross the middle, and he hit him without the ball in the air. Do you think we're going to see the, the leaving from the game of physical safeties? I mean, is that just something that can't happen anymore in this game? No, I don't know about that. You, know, I, you, you had, uh, I think it's all about technique, you know, and and. Like I said, you know, when you, when you have a situation in a game that um, it, the, the frustrating thing becomes when it, just like basketball or just like any other, um, you know, like an umpire behind the plate, once he calls a, a strike or a ball, you usually move on, right? And so a play on situation, which we had the other night, that it gets stopped. That's when it gets frustrating to everybody. Senior day ceremony is going to be set up for. What's up? Senior day ceremony. Oh yeah, it's a it's a big day. So you know we've we've done it uh, this the same wherever we've been. Um, each player will be recognized um, with his own introduction, and um, uh, all the seniors in in his own situation to, to get on Arizona Stadium by himself. Um, and one by one, we'll introduce those guys. We'll shake their hands, and uh, parents get down on the field and be able to see them. And then uh, after they're all introduced individually and recognized individually, then we'll have the team run out and meet them for their last time to run out in, in Arizona Stadium. Was Khalil's 33-yard run as explosive as you've seen it since you've been here? Not since I've been here. You mean in a game? Yes, this year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, in, in a game that was about as explosive. You know, he, uh, you know, he hit one the other night here, too, for about 20, I think. Um, so the, our GPS is, you know, I, I know the numbers on the GPS, so I know what he can do and what he can't do. And so I got a pretty good feel for his healthiness um, based on exact numbers of, of speed. So uh, you're... you're Pretty accurate. The other night, though, about two weeks ago, he was he was pretty close to where he was uh, Saturday night. Have you seen a lot of guys that can make that throw that he made to Cooper? No. 
No. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, he's running left and, and throwing. He's got a really live arm, you know, and there's a lot of guys that, you know, in, in the bye week you're able to look at, at some guys maybe on Sunday that you've been around, you've been on the field with. Uh, not a lot of guys that can make that throw. Where are you going with Sean Poindexter that every time he catches the ball is in the end zone? I'm, I'm done. You know, that's, uh, what's it, uh, what was it, Chris Carter? All I do is catch touchdowns. Yeah, yeah that's, we like that, though. You know, we probably need to get him the ball some more, but he's, you know, he's, here's, here's the other piece. You know, people talk about, well, he's, and you brought it up the other day, I didn't know that, what, six times? Um, now you start to take it for granted a little bit, but what I see is, you know, this guy plays hard without the ball. And a lot of the screen game, a lot of the runs, you know, and um, a lot of things that are going on on the perimeter for these explosive plays or for our screens to work and get four, five, six, nine yards, you know, he's got to be a very, very physical blocker. And so that was the question coming in to this year. You know, this guy's a volleyball player. He's long. He's athletic. You know, how strong is he? Will he play football? Um, because, you know, his skill set being – like a volleyball player, and I, I said this um, last night, you know, he's not as, as thick or as big as Mike Evans, um, but really kind of a similar story. You know, Mike was a one-year high school player, you know, red-shirted, played two years of college football, and now he's all pro. Um, and it, Mike's best years were ahead of him. And I, I think the same about about Sean. I think, you know, what you're seeing, his, his understanding of the game has gotten better. Uh, he works really hard uh, during the week at, at the little things in the game. He wants to be great. Um, he's Because he was a volleyball player, he's, he's already, he already has the hand-eye uh, and he's length and he can jump. But the, the intermediate piece, you know, let's not just run down the field and throw jump balls, but let's get the intermediate piece and let's play football and, and be able to block and, and understand coverages. That's where he's made his, his biggest strides. and. You know, I've had a bunch of people ask me about him, you know, that come in this building to, from the next level that, that, that you know, or see his potential and I think his best football is still ahead of him. How would you describe the Khalil to Sean? How does it compare to Johnny to Mike Evans? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, I don't know the numbers, but obviously he said, what, he's got six in the last six catches. So he's a big play guy, but I, I think that's, the piece that, that everybody sees, the biggest piece to me is what he does consistently during the game, even if it's one catch. You know, he's playing 70 some plays a game, he's going to catch a touchdown, but it's the other plays where he is involved um, and very unselfish. And, and I think that is a great, great example for our young receivers on the perimeter. What's your evaluation of Nikhil uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he's a He's a fabulous player. You know, he's a guy that uh, obviously, I, you know, I've known, I know very well, you know, his grandmother and, and the story and, and uh, just a tremendous young man and uh, a guy that we had, we had a lot of conversations with, he and Manny from, from the last place I was at. So, um, you know, he's, he's big, uh, he's got great body control, he is, uh, you know, he's a grown man now, and he plays like it. And if that wasn't enough, now they're now he's returning punts. So the guys that he doesn't make miss, he runs over at 220. So he's, you know, he, he's uh, everything that, uh, that is as advertised. You know, and he's going to be one of the first first guys at that position taken in the draft. So we got our hands full. They have maybe the best receiver in the league. They also have the leading rusher in the league. Does that become – yeah, and they have a quarterback who uh, is very smart that can run uh, and throw and does not turn the ball over. So, uh, you know, that, that becomes an issue because, you know, the, those three um, are, are three of the better players in this league. And Manny does a nice job of execution and, and, and not turning the ball over given uh, – Given Nikhil a chance down the field, and you know Benjamin has, as you said, you know he he runs. He's a violent runner, and uh, um, 
so you know the, it's it's more than just and their offensive line does a nice job with with the RPO system giving a run pass option a lot of times you know to Manny and he operates very very well in that system so um, yeah that they present an issue for for uh, in a lot of different ways. I thought I thought uh, you know they they were pretty good you know we, we we talk all the time about scoring with your body not with the ball you know that was a, a mistake that, that Gary made trying to reach that ball out on the goal line that's you know um, but um, you know I thought for the most part you know he was solid except for that it was a, a, a uh, you know we, we can't have that happen I thought Bam was back to form. I, you know, he was. He's really struggled this year with this. You know, he had a um, had really kind of a really bad turf toe. You know, one that that you know it was almost better if he had broken it. You know, so it would have been it had been probably a little bit better time just to put him up, but it wasn't broken. Uh, it's a little bit like a high ankle sprain. Sometimes you're better off breaking him, and then. You know, being a cast for four, four to five weeks, six weeks, and then coming back. Well, this thing wasn't broken, but it was just all messed up. So, and for a guy who runs the way he runs, and that is uh, a change of direction guy with power, um, that was it was awful. So every time he got a little healthy, we'd get him out there and he'd cut, and it would it flare up on him. But I I think you see, um, just like you saw in the fourth quarter at at, at Houston. Um, you know, I think you see that he's got tremendous potential um, to be a, a every down back, you know, as he grows because, you know, he, he can catch it. He can make people miss. He can run with power. He's got good vision. You know, he's young. But um, when he's had his opportunities, I think he's flashed. And, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that we have missed, you know, that uh, throughout the middle of the season. But obviously he looked a lot better Saturday night. Your, uh, relationship like with you know, I um, it's uh, it really started. I did an internship. I'm not sure if it was '98, '97, '98. I don't know. I was at Purdue, and uh, the NFL has um, uh, an internship program for assistant coaches. You know, just to 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 really broaden your horizon and. and you know, if you want to coach in the NFL, just to see how things were. And I, I was fortunate um, to uh, go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the time, and uh, and I, you know, uh, Tony Dungy was the head coach. Herm was there, and uh, Herm was kind of running the program. So he called, and so I, I, I got there. It was really an interesting staff. It was uh, Herm was the secondary coach. Um, Lovey Smith was the linebacker coach. Um, I can't think of uh, who's the defense coordinator at the Cowboys. Marinelli was the was the D line coach. He, you know, became the head coach at, at the Lions, and then um, the defensive coordinator, obviously. Um, it, so it, it was the every every coach on that staff on the defensive staff became a NFL head coach, and so you're there for two two weeks, and offensively, you know, I'm working with guys that are, are, you know you still see on television right now. Um, well, it was a great experience, so that's where I first got to meet him, and um, and then I, I, two years ago we uh, I had him come talk to our team at. Uh, at uh, A&M, so he came and, and talked and um, had a presentation. Just talked about not just football, but about life. He's he's just a uh, you know you you guys have heard him speak. He's he's energetic. I think you know he's he's coached. He's played at the highest level. Um, he's you know, the, I think network television um, is another thing that's helped him grow. But but obviously he's his own guy. And uh, you know he's a, he's a tremendous tremendous leader. Um, does things the, the right way, and I think uh, you know obviously he's he's doing a great job at Arizona State. Of, of What's that? Defensively, have you seen the improvement you want to see beginning of year to end of year? Well, you know you could say that until last weekend. You know, 
So, you know, in the last two weeks before that, it, I mean, it, it was, you know, this is a results-based business, right? So um, the, the weeks before that, I thought we continued to improve. You know, the, the performance Saturday night, you can't say that. So, uh, but again, you know, we put, the, we put the ball on the ground six times, right? So against a team like this, that is the leading scoring team in the, in the league and one of the top scoring teams in the country, um, it's about possessions also, right? So we, we give it back to them, you know, three more possessions. And a team like that, you can't do that. Right, so we, we we three more possessions there and an interception on the on the first series. Right, so you give it four more times to to a team like that. That's twenty points, at least, or fourteen if you're if you're lucky to hold it. You know, twenty one. So you know everything works hand in hand, and field position works hand in hand. You know the the um, the the poor decision on the kickoff return. I put the ball in. That just gives them a touchdown. Then, then you know, we fumble a kickoff return. We fumble an opening kickoff, but we get it back. So possessions and uh, field position still matter. But, yeah, we need to be better across the board than we were Saturday night. Speaking, one more question. Speaking of A&M, who was that rivalry game at A&M when they moved to the SEC? I would say it would be the last game of the year. I mean, you, you've got a couple of them. You, you – um, you know, you play Arkansas every every year in Jerry's World, so you know that that's kind of a, a neutral site game that's every year. And then LSU's the last game of the year. Um, one last thing. Last one, Michael. Yeah. Has a decision been reached on Jace? Would it go as far as whether he can play this year or whether he can it? Uh, it's all based on his injury. You know, we we've talked with Jace every week just about where he is strength wise. You know, he came back and, and got hurt again. We're never going to put a guy in, in you know, if, if in, in harm's way. You know, if, if you're injured and he wants to play. But, you know, with, with the strength in his arm right now, you know, I don't – I just don't see that happening this year. So, you know, he does have another year. Um, obviously, he's had those games if we wanted to play him. But it, it's kind of – you know, I just we just don't feel good about putting him out there with one arm and the an arm that uh, um, not I won't say one arm, but you understand what I'm saying. It's just he's weak on one side, and that, that puts even more pressure, and and can put him in an even more difficult situation. And, and instead of hey, listen, let's get you healthy, um, and we don't need to rush. You know, and and you will have the opportunity because of your eligibility status to, to, to be back here. Thank you, Coach. Okay, thanks. Thank you.